If you're trying to break into cloud in 2026, here's the truth. It's not that hard if you follow the right steps. Now, I know what you're thinking. Lucy, what about layoffs? What about AI taking jobs? And yes, those are major factors changing the industry. But it just means that the cloud job market is going through a bit of a reset. The skills that got people hired two years ago aren't necessarily the same ones that will get you hired today. So here's the thing. Cloud computing itself isn't going anywhere. AI is quite literally built on top of cloud infrastructure. In fact, most of the world's AI workloads are hosted in data centers owned by AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. This means companies need help with building, deploying, and maintaining cloud setups. AI alone cannot handle all of that. Humans will be expected to work alongside AI agents, using tools to help them automate manual tasks. And look, I've been on both sides of this. I've spent two years at AWS working as a solutions architect, back when ChatGPT didn't exist. Emails, demos, and slide presentations, those were all done manually. But with the help of AI now, my Solutions Arctic friends are having the time they need to complete their day-to-day -day tasks. So you can imagine in 2026, who would be a recruiter's favorite? Someone who has cloud knowledge but doesn't know how to leverage AI? Or someone who knows cloud and actually uses AI to help them become twice as productive? And so landing a cloud job in 2026 is all about AI. Using it to learn and upskill as fast as you can, and then staying ahead by continuously using using it in your work. With all that being said, let's get into the five simple steps to get hired in your dream cloud role. Step number one is to master cloud and IT fundamentals. Now, how you choose to do this is completely up to you, but here are your three options. Option number one is to go down the certification route, which is what I did. I got four AWS certifications in five months when I was breaking into cloud, and those helped me land interviews. Certifications are also great for mapping out a structured roadmap of what you need to learn, but just keep in mind that they hold little value value these days. What's important is real hands-on experience through projects, which I'll talk about later in step number two. In terms of resources, I'd recommend starting with something like AWS Skill Builder, which is Amazon's official cloud and AI training platform. Most of the courses on there are free and you can learn most of what you need there. If you want structured courses with hands-on labs, you can also consider Udemy. They offer a free trial of their personal plan and technically there's nothing stopping you from creating multiple accounts to extend the trial. Just don't tell them I gave you that idea. This unlocks video courses from amazing instructors like Stefan Marek, and I personally relied a lot on Udemy when learning cloud myself. Self. The second option is to skip certifications altogether and go straight for hands-on projects. Now, as we all know, the best way to learn anything technical is by getting real hands-on experience. With AI tools like ChatGPT, it's never been easier to build a portfolio of projects in a matter of weeks. If you're looking for project ideas, I start with this free project tutorial I have on my learning platform, Zero to Cloud. You'll build a cloud fun facts generator using a bunch of AWS services. I'll leave a link to it in the description below if you're interested in having a look. You can also check out workshops.aws, which offers a bunch of free hands-on tutorials at all levels. And option number three is to enroll in some kind of bootcamp or cloud computing degree, which I'd personally recommend against for most people. These programs typically charge thousands of dollars without a job guarantee. I mean, most of the best cloud and IT learning resources out there are either free or available at a lower cost, so why not try go with them first? Anyways, no matter which option you decide to take, give yourself about two to three months to fully understand cloud and IT fundamentals. Make sure that by the end of it, you feel confident explaining core concepts like compute, storage, networking, and security. And remember to always have ChatGPT or Claude open. Use it to create study notes, summary tables, and ask it to quiz you on important concepts. You'd be surprised what the current AI models are capable of. Now, once you have the fundamentals covered, step number two is all about gaining hands-on experience. And let me tell you, this is a part that many learners struggle with. Not because they don't know the importance of building cloud projects, but they simply don't know what to build. So here's my advice. Start with something small, like deploying a website on Amazon S3. Then progress into building projects that link three or more cloud services together, something like a three-tier web application on AWS. If you run into any issues with building, by the way, I have a 24-7 Slack community where we help you troubleshoot all the way until you've successfully built all five projects. My recommendation would be to check out my beginner AWS projects handbook on Zero to Cloud. I provide exact step-by-step -step instructions to five real-world projects. Pretty cool, right? The link to it is in the description 
description below. I also have intermediate and advanced level projects as well as role-based learning paths. Now, one question I often get asked is how many projects should I showcase on my portfolio? Well, three to four solid projects that cover a wide range of cloud services and use cases is more than enough. Focus on the quality of those and make sure to document them clearly. If you're not sure how to create a portfolio, you can check out this video. I dedicate around one to two months building projects for your portfolio. Okay, step number three is to play with AI. Now, the reason I say play with AI rather than just learn AI is because you shouldn't think of it as another technology you need to master. What's different about AI is that the barrier to getting started is quite low. You don't need deep theory or years of experience. Unless, of course, you want to become an AI machine learning scientist, for example. But yeah, what I'd like to do is to test the limits of what AI tools are capable of. For example, you might think that you can't use an AI agent to order and deliver a pizza to your front door. So why not try it out and see if it's possible? Spoiler, it is. I've also started experimenting with AI through fun and creative workloads. Let me show you what I mean. So this little clip you're seeing right now was actually created using a platform called FreePick. I simply uploaded a photo of myself and then typed in a prompt of what I wanted the video to do. In this case, create a video of me transforming into a doctor which was always my parents' dream career for me. I can also use the image generator to create an image from scratch. You can select between a lot of different AI models. But of course, I always choose to go with Google Nano Banana Pro, which is all the hype right now. Once you generate an image, by the way, you can then upload it to the video section and then also add some audio to your video. As you can see with a tool like FreePick, the entire process happens all in one place. Image, video, and audio. And they have all the latest models like Google VO3 and OpenAI Sora 2. If you're not sure which model to select, you can always go with the auto feature so that the AI picks for you. But yeah, if you haven't started using AI tools yet, I'd highly recommend doing so. To increase your productivity with FreePick, check out the link to it in the description below. You can get started for free. All right, step number four is to prepare for interviews. You don't have to wait until you have an interview scheduled to start practicing. When it comes to cloud interviews, there are three main types, behavioral interviews, technical interviews, and presentations. In a company like AWS, for example, there will be a mix of all three. The application application process typically starts with a phone interview followed by four one-hour back-to-back interviews. And since the pandemic, most of these interviews are still being held virtually, but some companies might want to interview you in person. Either way, it's really important for you to prepare for all three types of interviews. For behavioral ones, use something like the star format, situation, task, action, result. Have at least five to eight stories from previous work experiences. For technical interviews, practice explaining your projects out loud. You can also check out Glassdoor for common interviews questions. My AWS interview mastery course also has real questions that Amazon has asked before. And for presentations, you might be asked to present a technical solution to an interview panel. Practice creating architectural diagrams and explaining your thought process. Now you might be wondering, Lucy, how can I actually land cloud interviews? I'm not hearing back from any companies. Which brings me to step number five, and that is to network and build your brand. Look, I know many of you are introverts and I'm one myself. One of my favorite hobbies is staying at home and not talking to anyone. But here's the reality. According to LinkedIn, over 80% of jobs are filled through some type of networking and not by applying directly. I've seen this play out countless times. Just last month, one of my students landed a cloud engineer role at a fintech company through networking. She actively attended events at a local AWS meetup group for three months. Someone at the meetup knew that she was looking for work and so they introduced her to the hiring manager. The crazy part was that the job posting had over 500 applicants, but she was the one who ended up getting selected. Now, the good news is you don't have to be a big extrovert to network effectively, but you do have to put in the hours. Comment on LinkedIn posts from cloud engineers and architects, share what you're learning by posting the projects you're building, and join cloud communities on Slack and Discord. If you want to take it to the next level, I'd highly recommend attending local conferences and meetup groups. Most of them are free anyways, you just have to get yourself there. And trust me, putting yourself out there goes a long way. That's how most of the opportunities opportunities in my life came to be. From landing my job at AWS to building an online community of over 250,000 subscribers. So there you have it, the five steps I take in order to land a cloud job in 2026. Master the fundamentals, build real world projects, experiment with AI, practice interviews, and then network and build your brand. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.